Hello everyone. The title of this presentation is on discriminability of samples in the Hamming space of binar binarist neural activations. My name is Michal Lewandowski and this is co-joint work with Werner, with Hamid, Natalia and Bernard. The work has been done at Software Competence Center in Hagenberg in Austria. The outline of this presentation is as follows. First, we motivate our work and define uh, the binary serial activations on which our work is based. We then discuss how this work fits into the existing literature and put forward our research question. We then describe experimental framework developed to answer that question. We shortly go through the results and discuss the possible extensions of our work. To begin with the motivation of our work. First and foremost, our work is motivated by potential, potential uh, computational efficiency gain uh, when using a reduced information framework. Interestingly, there is a line of research which concerns so-called binary neural networks. In those neural networks, one substitutes the value of a neural of a neuron on the hidden layers of a uh, neural network uh, with either 0 and 1. And it turns out that such neural networks don't have significantly worse performance than the full not uh, constrained neural networks. Uh, on the other hand, such neural networks enjoy a way lower computational cost of training and can be used even on smartphones. Uh, there is also more theoretical uh, motivation of our work. Uh, it turns out that a ReLU-based uh, neural network, which we define shortly, provides an approximate isometric embedding into the Hamming space. Uh, lastly, there has been a lot of work associating the exclusivity of neural networks uh, in a function of its binary activation uh, values which we describe a little bit more in detail shortly afterwards. Uh, let us define a ReLU neural network. A ReLU neural network is a composition of affine functions where W and B are unknown parameters. They are usually trained by SGD-based methods. Uh, further, we need a notion of uh, activation vector. Uh, the activation vector for some input x at layer k is just the vector of uh, values on the on that layer k of activation values on that layer k. Uh, we'll also need a total number of neurons that was denoted by capital L. Next, uh, we will need a notion of row codes. Uh, we obtain a code sequence from the vector of its activations by clipping the values uh, of each neuron to either 0 and 1. We keep it uh, equal 0 if the value of that neuron is 0, and we keep it equal to 1 if it's strictly positive. Uh, finally, we need one more definition uh, of a linear region. For a neural network, a linear region is a set of inputs that corresponds to the same activation pattern. Uh, that is also, which also means that a linear region can be defined as a maximum compact uh, region where a neural network defines as a linear function. Right now we are ready to put forward our research question, which is, can we distinguish between distinct samples in this reduced information framework? To slow down a little bit and to put those definitions into practice, let's focus on the current figure. In the background, we can see a tessellation of the input space resulting during the training process of a real neural network. Element, we call elements of that tessellation linear regions. There were quite interesting research directions focused on linear regions recently. For example, there was a number of works focusing on upper and lower bounding the number of linear regions for a real neural network. From under their direction, some groups investigating the structure of linear regions uh, resulting during a training process of a neural network. Interestingly, it has been found out 
that the number of linear regions changes whether one uses a regularizer or not. Uh, also depends on the depth uh, versus width ratio. For example, a shallow neural network with a fixed number of neurons will have more linear regions than the neural network which is deep but with the same number of neurons. In this work, we ask ourselves the question whether we can use the information about the po position of a sample uh, in the neural linear regions to discriminate between different samples. Uh, as we, from our definition, it stems that any given linear region can be described by a vector of zeros and ones. And uh, they will describe the relative position of our sample point in, with respect to any other linear region. And the idea is if we can compute meaningful distances using binarized activation values. Uh, so let me walk you let me walk you through our experimental framework. Uh, we stay in a very controlled environment. We start with multivariate Gaussian distributions on 2D plane. We have a number of differently, distinctly centered, uh, evenly spaced multivariate Gaussian distributions, which we group into groups blockwise. For example, in the image on the left, we distinguish five different groups emit, emit 25 different, different, differently centered multivariate Gaussian distributions. We then train a real neural network to distinguish between them and store the training parameters. Uh, then we create a new testing dataset. That is, we create two different samples and we center them out on the training domain. We then move them a little bit forward, move them a little bit further away from each other and propagate through the stored parameters of a neural network. And we continue this process for several different positions of the Gaussian distributions, each time calculating chosen distance. Uh, once we are done, we uh, depict the values of distances on the figure. And we compare distances based on those act binarized activation values with distances which take into account the full information about the uh, values on the activation uh, neurons. Uh, it turns out uh, that the discriminability property is approximately preserved. Uh, to make experiments more varied, we tried to change the number of classes. For example, we be began with as little as two different classes and as much as a hundred classes in the very same example we have just seen. We also varied very much networks architecture. We began with a network with uh, 30 uh, neurons on three hidden layers, and we went up to 500 neurons in uh, 10 hidden layers, 50 neurons each. As a benchmark distance, we used a fresh, uh, fresh uh, distance, which is uh, for multivariate Gaussians and distance of moments. Uh, for distances on binary activation values, we took into account the Hamming distance if the sample consisted of one point, a Wasserstein two distance uh, with the Hamming base distance and maximum dis discrepancy dis with the Hamming kernel. Uh, it turns out that binarized activation values preserve distinguishability properties and uh, analysis surely could be refined by taking the geometry of cells into account. I would like to point your attention that the experimental framework we have investigating was limited. Namely, we didn't consider any image data set, which is surely a good idea to consider. And for more results on the experimental setup and results, I please refer, please have a look at our paper. Uh, from the applications and further research, uh, we can imagine application of our distance as a test statistic into sample test or as a domain adaptation tool 
to align two distinct domains. Thank you very much for your attention. I am looking forward to your questions.